1938, Carlist Spain, civil war over. We've even managed to get rid of our negative modifiers. We have our entire lives ahead of us. Maybe we'll claim the French throne. Maybe we'll kick Gibraltar out. Or restore the Iberian Union. The possibilities are limitless. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Hearts of Iron 4 La Resistance with me, Bitter Steel. Today I have a little guide for you, for those looking to win the Spanish Civil War as the Carlist faction. Let's hop right in, Iron Man Spain and go. Now first off, let's take stock of our nation, shall we? We have a few debilitating national spirits. Carlism. A heavy weekly reduction in stability, a 10% penalty to division defense and attack, quite brutal. And finally, some daily support for unaligned. Then we have military disloyalty, where leaders cost 100% more. That one isn't quite so bad, but we also cannot train units, we cannot disband units, or even change any unit template. So what we have is very much what we're stuck with. Then on to political violence, a big 15% hit to our stability and we are completely locked out of picking ministers or changing laws. That is another big oof right there. And last but not least, national strikes, another 10% hit to our stability and a 10% penalty across the board for our construction speed, our factory output and our dockyard output. So all in all, Spain is in rather poor shape and the upcoming 1936 elections are not going to improve that. But we're not here for a stable Spain, we're here for a great Spain, a Carlist Spain. So first off, we're going to pick the left focus here, a great Spain, click. Now for construction, we're going to want military factories in areas that are guaranteed to flip nationalist and that are integral to the Carlist cause. Now, I prefer to build them in Navarra, Burgos, and Western Aragon. We will control Navarra and Burgos through a national focus in the Carlist path called Prepare the Carlist Insurrection. This focus will guarantee us Burgos and Navarra. And we will heavily focus on Aragon through the Prepare the Carlist Insurrection decisions so we will also have Navarra when the event finally fires for our Carlist uprising. So a few military factories to ensure we can supply our troops with guns. Let's go here. Let's put one on support equipment, one on toward artillery, the rest on infantry equipment. For research, I prefer to go with land doctrines to get that boost when the war fires. And industry. Why industry? Because we want to get as many military factories out as we can and as many equipment pieces, guns, support equipment, artillery, as much as we can to ensure our loyal Carlos soldiers on the front lines have weapons. Now, the military, as it is, can just be gathered into one army under a, a decent leader. We know this one will flip nationalists. The Carlist sympathies will pop up at a later date. Well, I'll just pick whoever. Set them to exercising and a order to keep them near the areas that we are guaranteed to control. Preferably somewhere that's not going to flip Republican because if they are in a area that you're not contesting and is guaranteed to flip Republican, your troops will be teleported out and dropped randomly inside your own territory. Now for your Air Force, the tiny Spanish Air Force can just be gathered up in the airfield near Aragon and set to pilot exercises to get some good fighters in. They will provide valuable air support in the war to come. 
the navy navy you have a navy it's it's not a bad navy you can just gather them up somewhere near the north under a nationalist admiral and they can be handy when you're cleaning up the northern pockets near these areas i believe they are asturias and Pais vasco these two will flip republican but with your navy in the area you can provide shore bombardment which will help cleaning out those pockets now we're just gonna set this to speed three and we're just going to wait for the election event to fire now for focuses you're just going to keep going down the tree here it's it's very linear so seda Carlist support army of africa northern garrisons and then either con or sin paquito it does not matter much which ones you pick here here we have it the spanish elections of 1936 from this point onward we will have access to the expand garrison control decisions allowing us to influence the garrisons where states that we fully control will go to the nationalists and all other states will have the garrisons divided between the nationalists and republicans depending on the level of influence now that we have access to the decisions to influence the garrisons on map here we will focus our attention on eastern aragon and catalonia now why these two areas because these are the areas where the anarchist revolt will spawn for the republicans and if we control these areas as the nationalists that anarchist revolt will actually spawn in the south in sevilla and granada if we can trigger this it will force the republican forces to fight on two opposite front lines creating a sizable distraction so ideally we will try to get eastern aragon and catalonia fully under nationalist control at the start of the war and we can keep the ai busy from contesting us in these areas by also throwing a few contest garrison decisions at these northern coastal states forcing it to choose where to contest us also to ensure the republicans enter the war as weak as possible we will use the decisions available to us to cut the military plot by timer by 36 days Personally, I prefer to use suppress the strikes to give our industry a little boost while we wait for the civil war to fire. Uh, for our focuses, we will simply continue down this linear path. At the end, either Sin Paquito or Con Paquito does not really matter. Con Paquito gives you Franco as a field marshal, while Sin Paquito gives you 60 political power. Personally, I just pick franco because i'm used to it i suppose if you're going carlist anyway sin paquito would make more sense because of that 60 extra political power now from this point on it's just a matter of clicking these decisions on map and waiting for the inevitable war to fire
Now that the war has fired, we will turn to the actual front wars. As you can see, our decision to go with the Falange has given us a supremacy of the communion. Correction, we have gone with the Carlists, not the Falange, my bad. Next, for focuses, you will want to rush down these two, prepare the Carlist insurrection and contact the Union Militar Española. Prepare the Carlist insurrection will give you full control of Burgos and Navarra when your uprising occurs and gives you the ability to prepare the Carlist insurrection decisions. These will be vital as using these decisions will give you control of the states in which they were used when the event fires. So we're going to do that. After that, these two you want to do head the Junta Nacional and unite the Requetes to get rid of the disjointed Carlist Juntas. After that, you will probably have either no more time or time for one more of these decisions, uh, these focuses, before you have to rush, no compromise on Carlist ideals. As you can see, there is here an internal countdown of 316 days here before the fascists will kick us out and we want to beat them to the punch. Military wise, we are going to want to tie down as many Republican divisions as we can on the front lines. And at the same time, we are going to snake our way into their land and capture as many victory points as we can before the front lines solidify due to the unprepared offensive debuff that occurs after a few days. We mostly want to capture victory points or encircle Republican divisions. As for offensives, Ideally, you'll want to prepare the first offensive to take Madrid. Taking Madrid is quite important as it controls 30 victory points. But before we can do that, we will probably have to mop up the north. What you're going to want to do here is attack them where they are not stationed on a port tile to tie those units down and bait the units that are on a portile out. What I mean by that is allow them to walk away to take up position on their front lines or even walk into your territory unopposed. Anything to get them off that portile. Once they leave the portile, if you can pin them down with another one of your divisions, if that does not work, then simply try and rush a unit to cap the port behind them and make sure not to abandon the port. To the north, also consider deploying your navy to provide the shore bombardment buff. Other than that, it's simply going to be a case of a great deal of micromanagement on speed two or speed three until you are in a position to fire your Carlist uprising. So we are going to try and get to that point for the rest of this guide.
here we have it. The anarchists have declared war on the Republicans. Now, this has not fired in Sevilla, but as you can see, it's all down here in the south. They will be forced to split their army and face two enemies instead of one now. So our plan has worked perfectly so far. Now, with the impending fascist crackdown nearing and my no compromise on Carlist ideas almost finished, I'm going to take a little time to reorganize these troops. We will lose a lot of them because some will stick with the nationalists and the few that we are guaranteed to have without a doubt are the requetes the carlist militias so i'm going to move these to an area that i know they'll be put to good use there we have it the carlist uprising has fired and now it's time to kick some nationalist ass along with republicans so Let's get down to the nitty gritty of it and work our way through this. Now in this stage of the civil war, we'll want to knock out the nationalists first and quickly. Their troops will be offset from our borders, so we're going to push in aggressively where possible to get victory points or some easy encirclements. Our own units that have become encircled could serve as a good distraction, but ideally we'll want to link these back up with our own army as to not take too many losses. Now for the Republican front lines, we're going to want to be stabilizing these for now, not pushing in aggressively, and just focus all our aggressive energy towards the nationalists. Flex. And by aggressively sniping their victory points without any regard for sensible front lines, I've been able to knock out the nationalists relatively quickly with most of my army intact. So from this point onward is going to be a matter of mopping up in the south with the republicans and the anarchists still duking it out. Uh, the only thing that's really going to be a threat to you now is going to be those Russian divisions, especially those Russian tank divisions. You'll want to take good care to either avoid or encircle those. For the rest, it's just going to be a matter of micromanaging, snaking through their lines, getting those encirclements and bringing this war to an early close. You'll notice at this point, we'll have worn them down to the point that they can't even fill out their front lines anymore. So there, there's just a little bit of war left in them, but that's about it. I'm pretty sure at this point I can just set a field marshal order on aggressive and let it run. And that takes care of the Republicans. Now there's just the anarchists left and the civil war is in the bag. There we have it, ladies and gentlemen, we have finished the Spanish Civil War as the Carlist faction, the 18th of January 1938. The world is your oyster, from this point onward you can take your Carlist Spain in any direction you choose. And it can be quite the fun playthrough. It's still very early and you have a lot of cool focuses down your path. So. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, consider subscribing for more of these guides and other content. If you disliked the video, tell me why in the comments. And I'll see you next time with more Hearts of Iron 4 with me, Bittersteel. Goodbye.